If you find this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. For this part of the tutorial, I created a brand new refinery project from scratch because I was having too much trouble working on top of an existing application. I wanted to give refinery a chance in a very pure out of the box state. My goal here is to try replicating my original website's landing page by overwriting refinery's view templates and then transposing the slim code from the previous website into the new one. That should give us a good comparison of how customizing Refinery compares to just doing the page as a plain Rails application. Specifically, I want to know whether there's some additional overhead that may be involved in customizing a Refinery site. Refinery is designed to be customized by importing templates from the Refinery Rails engine and overriding the defaults. You can also add your own custom templates. But here on the command line, I'm going to give you an example where we override a template named home, and then we're going to write our own code in it, along with some Twitter bootstrap styling. So now the page has been created and we could find it in our editor. At this point, all that's in the home template is a command to render the refinery content page. So let's add some additional text here and see if we can get that text to show up on our test page in the web browser. I'm also going to convert this template from ERB to slim. So now when we reload the page in our web browser, we can see our test text there. But there's still plenty of styling to do. I'm going to add Twitter Bootstrap, as well as change the HTML displaying the navigation menu, which will require us to modify templates wrapping this page, such as the head part of the HTML page. So now the first part that I'm going to tackle is setting up Twitter Bootstrap to be included through the Rails 6 Webpacker. But first, it would be useful to know how Refinery includes JavaScript in its pages in order to get a better understanding of where we might need to make some changes. So let's pull up the application layout template from within the Ruby Gem source code and look for the line that renders any JavaScript dependencies into the web page. As you can see here, it includes a partial called JavaScripts, and inside of that JavaScripts file, it's using the JavaScript include tag command. That's actually not what we want if we're going to be using Webpacker with Rails. JavaScript include tag compiles JavaScript using the somewhat deprecated asset pipeline feature, and what we really want is to change that line to JavaScript pack tag to pull in the JS deliverable compiled by Webpacker. So first we're going to use the command line to copy that JavaScript partial into our application and then we're going to modify it to include the Webpacker deliverable. By the way, I didn't play around with Refinery long enough to find out if there were any side effects from removing the reference to the old asset pipeline. Just be aware that at some point you might run into a dependency issue when making this sort of change. The way I'm adding package JavaScript dependencies to this application is through Yarn. So I'm doing Yarn add Bootstrap, jQuery, and Popper.js, which is everything you need to install Twitter Bootstrap. This will update my package.json file and add the package files under my node modules directory. Next, I want to add the require statements referencing those modules in my pack slash application.js file. And see that import application SCSS reference at the bottom? That refers to a styling page I'm going to create, which will import the Twitter Bootstrap style sheets. I'm also going to add some of my own styles in a file called theme.scsx. So I tried loading the page to see if the style is updated, and I got this error message about the incorrect SAS loader. After struggling with this problem for a few hours, I finally figured out that was because I ran yarn from my local console to install the dependencies and not from within the Docker container. Redoing the yarn install command, but from within my Docker container seemed to do the trick. And now the styles load and the page works as expected. But there's still more styling work to do. Next, I'm going to change that navigation menu to match the one on my original website. The way we're going to approach this is to first hard code the HTML layout in the view template using slim. So that way we have the look we want and we could confirm that. 
and then we'll convert that code to dynamically build the menu using Refinery's internal data. As a precursor to modifying the look of the navigation menu, I went ahead and created a new Refinery template called Landing and made that look just how I want for the site's landing page. This page I anticipate being a little different from the other pages on the site, requiring a lot more fancy custom HTML. Rather than trying to code that from within the confines of Refinery, I just went ahead and did it in Slim. Now let's have a look at the Refinery gem source code to find out how it loads the menu. Inside of the application layout template, there's a reference to site bar. That loads the Refinery administration bar at the top of each page if you're an administrator and you're logged in. But just below that, there is a call to Refinery slash header and if we look in that partial, we can see that it's where it builds a navigation menu by calling an object called Menu Presenter. When we look inside the Menu Presenter class, it has a series of methods that iterate through the menu items using Rails helpers to build the appropriate HTML tags for the styling library being used. The Refinery documentation provides us a guide for making our own Menu Presenter. However, it's done for foundation and we want to use Twitter Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and build our own menu presenter class that we can use in this header template. Here's a look at the HTML being generated by the default menu presenter. We want to make our own presenter and template modifications so that the HTML tags and styling classes make use of the Twitter bootstrap layout functionality. So first we're going to import the header template into our project using the refinery override rate task. Next we can start changing around the template. Let's go ahead and change the default company name to reflect the name of our website. And I'm going to do that by changing the tags over at the top part of this header. Notice that I'm incorporating the nav and navbar HTML elements because the site title goes into the menu bar when you're using Twitter Bootstrap. I've also changed the template type from ERB to slim. Next, we're going to copy paste the Rails template helper provided in the documentation example and modify it to wrap our Bootstrap menu presenter. Then, I create a file for the presenter class itself. And the next step took me several hours. Through trial and error and referencing the Twitter Bootstrap documentation, I figured out the way to get the styles and tags displayed correctly. Finally, we have our menu appearing using the aesthetics of Twitter Bootstrap styling. If we make any changes to the pages now, that will be reflected in the menu dynamically.